But last night was AW Forbidden Door. And I want to start with an update, although we don't really have much of an update on Adam Cole. If you didn't see the show last night, Adam Cole suffered what is believed to be a concussion during his match for the IWGP World Heavyweight title. It was Jay White, Hangman, Okada, and Adam Cole. And I don't know the move. I don't know when. I was given the impression it was actually somewhat early in the match. And then he worked the entire rest of the match with a concussion. And uh, for whatever reason, it wasn't until the very end of the match that uh, he was in there with Okada. Okada went for the Rainmaker. Cole is supposed to duck, which he did, but then he just stayed down. And uh, Adam, uh, I'm sorry, Jay White jumped in the ring, tossed Okada out of the ring, rolled over Cole, uh, held him down, and uh, and pinned him. And then afterwards, they had the uh, the doctor hit the ring to check on Adam Cole. And uh, he did leave under his own power. I was told that, uh, you know, when they got him backstage to examine him, he was feeling all right, was what I was told. But he was clearly, there was an injury. And uh, this is, you know, he's been working with a shoulder injury. If you watch the show, I mean, his shoulder is all taped up. And he had had another injury in the uh, Samoa Joe match, which I believe was also a concussion. So he had two con- two concussions in the span of a month, and he needs time off to get better. And uh, hopefully he gets a lot of time off to get better because, uh, you know, that's two matches where uh, not only did he suffer concussion, but uh, he still managed to work an excellent match with a concussion. So a healthy Adam Cole is what we need, and uh, it's never good to suffer two head injuries in the span of one month. So wishing all the best to him, and uh, hopefully he gets checked out and everything is all right. And uh, that's the update on him. There was also a main event with John Moxley and Hiroshi Tanahashi, and uh, John Moxley's doing the match, and he rolls outside, and uh, all of a sudden he comes back to the ring and he is gushing blood. And uh, I immediately, because it's John Moxley, just thought, well, he uh, he bladed. Why? I don't know. It's not like he got hit with a pipe or anything like that. He just came up and he's he's bleeding everywhere. So uh, I'm doing the show with Vinny, and, uh, and I, I think it was Vinny. Or maybe it was the announcers and Vinny. But, you know, everyone starts talking about how I think they clonked heads on the... Uh, on the sling blade, and it was it was hard way, and I never thought that it would be hard way because I don't know if John Moxley actually travels town to town with blades, but I do know that this brother's got a lot of blades, and uh, I think in the uh, the filthy Tom Lawler Fred Rosser match, I think that they got the actual blade for that match from John Moxley, so he may actually have like a doctor's kit full of blades. But anyway. So uh, once everybody was asking about it, I I sent a a message asking if it was a uh, if it was hard way, and I did not mention the word blade. I I simply asked hard way, and uh, the answer was yes. So it's possible that uh, the person that I sent this message to was confused, and when they read it, they thought I was asking if it was a blade job, and they said yes. But uh, I, I was told that it was it was hard way. But at the end of the day, that aspect doesn't matter. It was a Moxley match, and he's bleeding everywhere. Now, what does matter is uh, then during the Observer radio show, Dave mentioned that uh, during the post-show press conference, and I don't know if this was during the press conference or if it was like, you know, jibber-jabber after the press conference because those things happen. But uh, he mentioned that Moxley had stated that he might have a concussion. And uh, what I was told was that Moxley does not have a concussion. And if you've ever watched a, uh, like a Moxley interview, and actually I think that he did this exact same interview after the Filthy Tom match at Defy. Whenever he has a bloody match, he goes, uh, you know, I may have blood loss, I might be concussed. Uh, da, da. It's part of his, his in-character shtick. So, uh, anyway, he does not have a concussion. So, John Moxley is fine. He may or may not have bladed, but he did bleed everywhere. And he did beat Hiroshi Tanahashi to win the AEW Interim uh, Championship. And so, at some point, he will face uh, 
He will face CM Punk when CM Punk is ready to return from his, quote, lower leg injury. But uh, we got a lot to talk about on this show. I guess we'll start with uh, just the main event. Mike, what did you think, as you are represented here by uh, GRAF, of yes. the main event of this program? I thought, uh, other than uh, the, the finish of the four-way when it came to the title matches, you know, the obvious wonkiness there for the reasons that you explained, I thought that was a really great match. And, you know, I was thinking about it when I was watching that. When it comes to Hangman Page, there's probably some people, and in fact, I know there are on the outside of AEW that look at him and go, I don't. I don't see what they see. The booking is this. The booking is that. But you know what? He's kind of like, <laughs> he's going to end up being like AEW Sting. Because no matter what, he's going to rise to the occasion. And no matter what you've said about the build into that match, and a lot of people had a lot of opinions, especially on that one, he's great. <laughs> and he's going to be such a future star for them. And he, for all of the talk going into that match and how wonky it was, he really rose above. And I thought that was great. And I thought Jay White was great with that in that match, too. With Tanahashi and Moxley, Tanahashi's just the greatest. You know, I've been a longtime fan of his. I've been able to watch him for a long time. And he's an older guy who has taken a beating. And you can see sometimes where he is moving a little bit mechanically, but hey, he can still turn it on and he's still one of the best in the world when he does. And a perfect dance partner with with John Moxley in, in the aspect of we've seen Tanahashi against everybody. We've seen him in the pure garbage match against Kento, which was referenced during the match. We've seen him in all sorts of these different situations, but with John Moxley, who you can slow it down a little bit for Tanahashi. You don't have to worry about Naito or Ibushi matches where he feels like he's got to keep up. It's a little bit slower with Moxley. And with Moxley, it brings him up a little bit because sometimes with the punch and kick and he's got a certain style of match and you know there's going to be plunder at some point. He's probably going to bleed, which he did. But it brings him up a level, too, to work with Tanahashi. And I thought it was a great capper on what was a great, a pretty great night. Now, it's is was it one of the all-time great shows. I'll leave that for other people to discuss. I don't really think it was, but I don't really care. You know, this was, for me, a step one of these two companies working together for the first time. I understand that there were politics involved. I understand that there were injuries. And I tried to block out as much as the of the banter and stuff on social media last week because there was so much that, at the end of the day, it was just like, you know, when everything's going to be said and done come Sunday night, Monday morning, people are going to be satisfied with what they saw. And for the most part, from what I've seen, and again, maybe my timeline's a little bit too clean or a lot cleaner than other people's, everybody seems to be in agreement that it was a really good show. The, sur the surprises, some expected like Cesaro, it delivered as expected. Some surprises, like Shibata coming out there. I mean, with his music hitting, the entire place going ballistic. Incredible moments happen. So we can we can nitpick it to death. We can talk about some of the things. We no one's going to nitpick like. this show. What are you talking about? <laughs> if you were going to nitpick not. this show, get off the chat today and go away, you nerds. This was an all timer. And you know what's funny about this being an all timer? Oh, it's an all timer. People people are going to talk about this for a year. The way they talk about uh, that first All In. It's just this this classic show, top to bottom. There was not anything resembling a bad match on the show. Like, the closest you could come to, uh, to say that there was, like, a bad match on the show was, like, the Thunder Rosa-Tony Storm match. And that oh, was not a bad yeah, match. not a bad match. <laughs> so the point of this is, there's so much talent in AEW, and there's so much talent in New Japan, that for one year... People are going to talk about this as being an all-time great show. But then next year, there's well, going to be are, Forbidden obviously. Door 2. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, that's going to be even better than this one. No Don't hyperbole. question me, Mike. You'll find hyperbole. out on the show today. <laughs> no, it's not. Look, thank God there's a break. Go fix your camera. Observer Live. No offense to anyone named Bert. But when no. you spell it with a U, it's much worse. Vinny, you got to go to NXT, and your name is Bert. Okay? <laughs> you can either spell it B-E-R-T... Or B U R T. You're gonna look at both of those. You're gonna go E for sure. Yeah. Right, Craig. Craig knows. Yeah. Because like it's like I drank so much I burnt. <laughs> you know. <laughs> what? First it was narcissus. Okay. But then later it changed to the narcissist. Yes. 
With a T. Yes. But that wasn't narcissist. That was a narcissist. The narcissist. No. The narcissist. Who cares? Bert. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bert narcissist. <laughs> Bert, like Bert. Bert. I'm sorry. I need to recover from Bert narcissist. <laughs> He's such a narcissist. He kept the name Bert. <laughs> yeah. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.